grace, peace, and mercy be to you from the one who died for you and who died for me and who rose to life on the third day, never to die again. It had to be more than just a simple feeling of deep gratitude. It was much more than an excitement of joining a new social or political movement. Definitely had to be more than jumping on a bandwagon like the Oilers. (laughs) But the response to Jesus' life, his death, and his resurrection, it changed lives. And it still changes lives. It changed perceptions, and it still has to change perceptions. It changed relationships, and it continues to inform and grow and change relationships. Jesus' life, death, and resurrection changed the course of human history. Things are different with Jesus. They have to be, or it's all for naught, isn't it? In history, whether it was something like scales falling off eyes or hearts burning as they're walking down a road conversing with a stranger only to realize that it was God himself or the tongues of fires dancing above heads, the gospel being preached in multiple languages by people who had never been able to speak those languages before. All of those things of history pointed to the reality, a reality that was undeniable and unmistakable. Jesus' victory over death, the actions of the Holy Spirit both produced and continued to produce something that is counter to human nature something that's, that turns our sin of selfishness on its head, something that compels us to live differently. Did you catch what happened in history as recorded in our reading? By the power of God, people came together. They came together. They weren't divided It didn't matter what their upbringing was. It didn't matter how much they loved a political party or not. It didn't matter what their most cherished possessions were. They came together. They shared all they had. They lived in community. We need community don't we? You've heard this before, but it's worth repeating. We know that in the history of the world, when everything came into existence, God spoke and it was so. And every time that God spoke and something happened, he looked and he said, it is good. The sun and the stars and the planets, they're good. The vegetation, they're good. The animals, they're good. And the refrain, it is good, goes on and on and on. And then on that sixth day, God rolls up his sleeves and he doesn't say it's good, but as he breathes life into that clay man, as he imparts himself into humanity and gives the breath of life, he goes, it is very good. You are are very good, created in the image of a God who loves you above everything. And in that time of creation, there's only one time where God says it's not good. Do you recall what that is? It's not good for man and woman to be alone. It's not good for us to be alone. We need community. It's part of our DNA. It's part of our support system. It's part of how God designed us to be, to come together in community, to find love and support and acceptance, to find people who are willing to share burdens and struggles and also to party with you in times of celebration. Community is important. What do you seek 
in community. Because I'm certain of this, the thing that you seek in community is the thing that you're gonna find. If you want community here and you want to find love and acceptance and purpose, you're gonna find that by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of God, believers came together and shared everything. Community, widows were taken care of, orphans were fed, needs were met. Somebody sold something that they had in order to provide for somebody that they knew or maybe didn't quite know so well. There was love in action. There was unity and not division. There was acceptance and not dissension. Community is formed. People coming together and pursuing peace, common good, and care for one another. The ability and the practice of not only seeing someone else, but placing their needs on par with your own, not above and not below, but placing their needs on par with your own is the definition of a generous life. Generosity flows from the God who was willing to give everything for the people who have a hard time struggling to see outside of ourself. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the breaking of bread and prayers. Awe came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. All things in common. Is it possible for us to see that beyond material possessions? Can we, stay, can we take a step back out of ourself and seek common ground and seek to love and honor and cherish even somebody who has different political views than I do? It was others equally as important as self, seeing them in the way that God would see them. It was giving far above amassing. It was forgiveness above judgment. It was living in community above building self-centered kingdoms. And it can only happen through the work of the Holy Spirit. Community, it's part of our DNA. Can you imagine what life in the Garden of Eden was like? Walking in perfect community with God and with another human being? Life is about community walking together. But we hear it, don't we? Hey, that fruit, it's pretty tasty, isn't it? It's shiny. It's maybe something different than you've experienced. It looks good. You really want it, don't you? Come on, everybody's eating that fruit. It's good, just try it. What could possibly go wrong? What would happen? Oh, you're not gonna die, he says. You're just gonna be like God. There it is. A simple invitation not to live generously like God, not to live sacrificially like God, but an invitation to take control and authority to twist who God is, to twist your thinking, to be deceived into thinking that you're the ultimate authority in all things, to join a refrain that says, well, my personal truth says that I'm more right than you. Just eat the fruit. Replace God with self. And when they did, when we do, humanity takes an incredibly dark turn, doesn't it? 
If your life resembles mine in any way, then you know that it's true that we continue to struggle with that very thing. To believe that we're in control, to believe that we are the authority, to believe that we know better and more than other people, to believe that if everyone just thought like I did and did what I wanted them to do, that life would be great. In Jesus, though, the fulfillment of being like God, it took on a very different meaning. Through his sacrifice, death, and resurrection, through the restoration that he offers, us, children of God, children who are claimed in the waters of baptism and by faith, it means that we individually and collectively are given the power to live generously in every area of life. Do you believe that you have the power and the authority to love unconditionally? To let go of those barriers? Do you believe that you have the power to help people carry the hurts and burdens that they're facing? Do you believe that you have the authority and the means to take care of those in our community that need to be taken care of? Do we have the means and the authority to provide for the widows and the orphans? To walk with those who are sick, to provide healing and wholeness? As a church, do we believe that we have the power to bear witness to the God who has chosen to redeem, to forgive, and to give life? Here's the truth. We're shaped by the things that we crave. Whether those things are good or not so good, they shape us. The things that we shape, we desire, we pursue, we crave, they alter who we are and how we think. And if that's true, as you look inside your own life, what is it that you crave? Are the things that you crave good? Or are they good only for you? As the undeniable news about Jesus was shared and hope was restored, I love this, that one of the first friends of Jesus, a man named Peter, who stood at that campfire and said, I don't know the man, later turned around and wrote these words. Brothers and sisters, crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation now that you have tasted that the Lord is good. We taste that the Lord is good because we receive his forgiveness. We receive his life. We receive his spirit. The Lord is good. And because he is good, is it possible for us to crave what is essential? The thing that brings health and strength and vitality. In Jesus, is it possible, it is possible for us to crave the things that are good and to turn away from the things that are destructive. It's possible because you have been chosen by Jesus. You have been redeemed by God himself. You have been given new life and the spirit to guide you and walk with you. Every single malady, every single sin, every single imperfection, every single inconsistency in our lives is forgiven. All of those things, they were hurled on Jesus as he breathed his last earthly breath. It is finished. And we know the end of the story. Jesus didn't stay dead, did he? He rose. He came out of that tomb. He broke through the darkness. And as he did, the sin and the shame and the guilt stayed in the darkness. It was exposed for the lies that they are forever. And Jesus bestowed the truth and a new way of living and thinking for us. The God who created you 
is a God who is willing to give everything for you so that he might win your heart and your life. The depths of Jesus' riches are infinite. He's the God who empowers, who transforms, who motivates, who transfigures, and who who equips us to live lives that display meaning and purposes beyond ourselves. Experience the goodness of God. As we come together in a community, do we believe that we have everything necessary to affect change in this world? See, here's the truth. God doesn't just need our money. He desires our whole person. He desires a relationship, and often when we read that passage of them coming together and sharing everything, our mind instantly goes to money and nothing else. But we need to look differently. It's time, treasure, talents, thoughts, relationships, everything. This is one of my most prized possessions. It sits in my office. For you, it's a soccer ball. For me, it's so much more. This soccer ball embodies a truth for me, something that I needed to learn. When I was in seminary and I was working with LAMP, we started a sports ministry program and we would go into First Nation villages and often there was massive amounts of barriers because there was societal stigma that had been placed on me and on other people. There were tensions, there were misunderstandings, there were things, confusion, questions. Why are you here? What are you doing? But here's the simple truth that I know is that when we took this, put it on the ground and kicked it to somebody, the barrier started to come down. And as they kicked it back, it came down more and more and more. And even if a kid picked it up and ran away with it and we chased them together to get it, we had a common purpose. We were the same. We controlled the things that we had in common and that became more important than our differences. Right there was the heart of community. We have everything, whether it's soccer balls or a large bank account. We have everything that we need to impact this world, to impact our community, to speak into the lives of people around us. Do you believe that to be true? If we take a moment and we sit on it, Do we believe that as individuals and as a congregation that God has given us everything we need? And before we answer out loud, if we absolutely believe that to be true, how could we not share everything that we have so that people would see Jesus' love? You are chosen and you are empowered to live a life that brings hope and healing and restoration to all of the circles and situations that you face. As individuals, as a congregation, what are we willing to share? What are we willing to come together over? What are we willing to use to bring hope, healing, and peace to the people that God has called us to go to? In Jesus' name and for his sake, we have everything. You are loved, you are empowered, and we are sent to be his hands and his feet and his voice to the very ends of the earth. In Jesus' name and for his sake, amen.